a blessing to be in the Salt Lake City. I tell you, I, I, I arrived and I, I discovered this is another Mombasa. There are beaches over here. The people are serious. And I said, wow, where have I been? But I have come and I bless God for this opportunity to share with us from God's word this beautiful morning. I want to bring you greetings from my beautiful wife. There is no other beautiful woman in the world apart from her. And in the morning she called me and she prayed over the phone and she said, go in the strength of the Lord. And uh, also greetings from our two-year-old daughter and greetings from uh, our soon-to-be-born child. We are here to discover whether it's a son or a daughter. But in the month of August, we will know. We will know. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm saying there are two. It's not one child. There are two. Because we believe a child comes in t- when they are conceived, they are a child. Amen. Amen. We are living in a wicked world. We are living in a world where there are a lot of pressures, especially for us, the young people. Uh, we have just seen in the U.S. the other day, they have legalized gay marriages and they are saying it's okay. If you find another man, if Mark finds Timothy, it's okay. If uh, Carol finds Esther, it's okay. And this is quickly coming into our city and into our country today. There is also another movement that has begun that is known as transgender, where people are going, you are born a man, and they go and they do a few things to you, they put you some hormones, they they dress you up like a woman, and they tell you from today, you are no longer Joshua, you are Jennifer. We are living in a wicked world where at the touch of our screens, on our phones, when we swipe, you can easily get pornography free of charge. And there are, there are many things that are calling out for our attention. There are many things that are coming to steal the joy of God in our lives. There are many things that are coming and they are destabilizing our faith. And these things are not just with the young people. They are even with the mature people, adults, people who have mpango wakando. They are not satisfied with that which God has given them. They want to go and find out how does this other one taste. Amen. You know, when I was coming to Kisumu, I was told that uh, Sitam Kisumu is the epitome of Pentecostal churches in Sitam. But I'm starting to doubt that, that, that instruction that I got. I heard that this is the epitome of Pentecostalism in the whole of Sitam. But I'm seeing a Baptist congregation and I'm wondering, am I in the right place? Am I in Sitam Kisumu? Uh, Am I in Sitam Kisumu? Please confirm that which the report that I have gotten. Kindly confirm it. Otherwise, I will take another report. Today I want to speak to us about overcoming turbulence. You know when you're in the city of Kisumu, you you must choose uh, right words. You don't just say the power of God. Turbulence is is a vocabulary. Um, Lest you say that uh, the man who came here is not well versed with the audience that he's speaking to. Overcoming turbulence. Tell your neighbor turbulence. And shake a bit, say turbulence. When I checked my dictionary, the definition of turbulence, it means commotion. Turbulence means confusion. Turbulence means unrest. Turbulence means turmoil. Turbulence means instability. Turbulence means disorder. And I have come to declare this morning that we are going to overcome confusion. That we are going to overcome unrest. That we are going to overcome instability. That we are going to overcome turmoil. Because God is with us and God is in us. Where I come from, we read the scripture while we are standing. 
I have come to discover that uh, we stand for the president when he comes in. We stand for his excellency, the governor. We stand for their excellencies, the members of parliament and the county assembly. But we rarely stand in honor of God's word. We even stand in honor of dead people and we give them a moment of silence. I want us to rise to our feet and we stand in honor of God's word as we read Romans chapter 8. We read a few verses earlier, but I want us to read more. Romans chapter 8. If you are there, say amen. The young people call this book Romans. Romans chapter 8 from verse 28. I will read to verse 39. The Bible says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? And I will put there, we are unbogable. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any church against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God bless his word and you may have your blessed seats. In our lives as believers, we go through many challenges and in our lives as believers, we go through storms. But we are called by this scripture to soar as eagles over and above the challenges and the turmoil and the persecution and the hardships that come our way. This scripture points us to Jesus Christ who overcame every manner of turmoil, every manner of turbulence that came in his life. And in this generation, ladies and gentlemen, we must stand and represent God because there is a younger generation that we have just released now and they have gone to the Sunday school. There is a younger generation that is waiting for us to live a heritage of who God is and what the gospel can do. It is sad that in our generation today, we are watering down the gospel. The gospel has become a business. It has become pandambegu. And I ask myself, where have you sold metal and it grew? Where have you sold paper and it grew? Money is paper. When did paper start growing? Pandambegu naime. We have cheapened the gospel. But this scripture is pointing us back to Christ who is at the center, who is the locus of our Christianity. It is pointing us to him because he is the focal point of who we are and what we are called to be. Ladies and gentlemen, God never promised us a storm-free life, but he promised us a storm-proof life. Our lives will not be free of challenges. 
And right now, I want to uh, apologize on my own behalf and on behalf of other ministers of the gospel who have told you, come to Jesus and everything will be okay. Allow me to change your theology and tell you, come to Jesus and let all hell break loose. I knew I wouldn't get an amen right there. I knew. But the scripture says that Christ suffered even to the point of death. And who is our perfect example? Christ Jesus. But even in that suffering, the grace of God covered him. The glory of God covered him and he overcame. And because Christ overcame, I shall overcome. And I have overcome already. Allow me to quickly draw five lessons from this scripture that we have read this morning if we are going to overcome the turbulence that come in our lives number one God is for us God is for us the Bible in verse 28 says and we know that in all these things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose and then verse 31 says, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? I want to proclaim that when God is on our side, we are unbogable. We are unshakable. We are untunable. Nobody can tune us because God is for us. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The great I am. The God who says I am the consuming fire. He is for us the great commander of the army of the Lord. All he needs to do is to speak and something happens. He is for me. Why should I fear a witch doctor? Or somebody who looks at me with queer eyes. I can't take my son, my daughter up country because they will look at them with queer eyes. Let them look at, at my son, at my daughter with queer eyes. But I am so confident that God is for me. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is standing by me and nothing can shake him. I don't care whether they will go to Lake Victoria deep down within. I don't know how they do it. They know and I don't care. But God is for me. And when God is involved in an affair, everything happens to his good. And he brings glory to himself. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not working to make us happy. I have met believers who tell me, oh, pastor, you know, I have not experienced happiness. Mm -mm -mm -mm. God is working in our lives to fulfill his purpose. And sometimes the things that it takes us through are difficult. They are difficult examinations for you to be called a doctor, a PhD holder. You must do research. You must collect your data. You must analyze your data. You must stand in front of other professors and defend your dissertation so that we can call you a doctor. What an if it was watu wanapewa huku kando ya barabara. At the Reverend Dr. So and so. Not at just soma class eight. Mm -mm. We are talking about the serious thing. Going through the process. Nowadays we have cheapened things. You know, for, for you to hear somebody being called a doctor is a serious thing. Not the medical doctor, a PhD holder. They have gone through rigorous study. A friend of mine did his PhD for 12 years. And, and not because he was not bright, uh -huh, but because he was black. And all the professors that were, were assessing him were white. And they kept taking him back and back so that he could give up and come back to the country. But he said, this thing is mine. I will go for it and I will get it. And he got it. After how many years? 12 years. And God was with him. It is not about happiness. It is about God fulfilling his purpose in our lives. The goal of God is to make us more and more like Jesus Christ. Some of us will ask ourselves, what is spiritual maturity? Spiritual maturity is us becoming more and more like Christ every day. 
us de decreasing so that Christ might increase. We die to ourselves. We die to the flesh. We die to the things that are hindering God from moving in our lives. And we allow Christ to be glorified in our lives. I have heard people who say, Pastor, I woke up on the left side of the bed. Are you that kind of a person? You wake up and you're feeling, oh, this day is not going to be good. It's, it's just wrong, everything. There's no electricity. Uh, I can't take my hot shower. I haven't ironed my clothes. It's already late. Uh, is there anybody like that who has woken up and lift your heart, I will see it and I will pray with you. Don't lift your, your hand, lift your heart. I am seeing those hearts. I usually tell such kind of a people who are always, you know, there are people who drain the energy from you. If you see them coming from that direction, you take another one. Because they come, they talk to you, you leave feeling heavy. Have you met such kind of a people? I tell these people that it is important for them to realize that as they begin every day, they need to begin it with God. If I have woken up on the left side of the bed, I will go back to my bed and wake up on the right side of the bed and walk up and, and serve the Lord. What is it about that? You know, I woke up. No, go back to bed. Roll, roll, roll. Get out on the right side of the bed. Wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I know that I'm a son of God. I know that I'm a child of God. I know that I'm more than a conqueror. I know that I'm an ego which is just about to sow. I am stepping into this day with victory in my mind because God is for me God is for us God is for us number two if we are going to overcome turbulence in our lives we must discover that Christ died for us Christ died for us verse 32 it says he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? I have discovered that God the Father gave the very best gift by giving his one and only son. He did not spare. He did not spare. He gave us the best. And because he gave us the best, we have the right and the privilege of being called co-heirs with Christ. We are children of God. We belong to God because of the work that Christ did on the cross. If it wasn't for the cross, you and I will not be here. If it wasn't for the cross, maybe you will be the person who will be brewing third generation liquor. Not even second generation. Do you know third generation? Third generation is the one where there is a pot and we are seated many people and there is a marija inside. That is called third generation. It is okay. We will get it later. We bless God. If it wasn't for God, maybe you will be a witch doctor par excellence. If it wasn't for God, you will be a murderer somewhere. But Christ, because of his love, because of his mercy, he has died for us. And we are able to overcome turbulences in our lives because we belong to Christ. We stand on the basis of the cross. We stand on the basis of the work that was done at Calvary. We don't stand on our own behalf. We stand on the basis of the grace of God that was extended to us in Calvary. That is the basis of our salvation. You are not saved because you give a lot of tithe. You are not saved because you give a lot of offering. You are not saved because you are in all the ministries. 
You are saved because you have acknowledged the grace that God has availed to us through his son Jesus Christ. We have confused things nowadays. We have confused our priorities. And we think just because I serve a lot in church. And I'm not saying that you do not serve. That you are saved. It is possible for you to serve in church on your way to hell. Hello? Hello? It is possible for you to play drums on your way to hell. I was talking to a young man that has been playing drums in a particular church, which I won't say for my security purposes, because I've heard that word being used a lot here. <laughs> I, I don't know who is in this service. So <laughs> the, the, there's a young man in a particular church that has played drums for seven years, a very gifted young man, and he has learned the drill. He knows even how to get in the mood. You know the way, hallelujah, he gets in the mood and he plays drums. And I talked with him and I found out that this guy is not saved. And he's been playing in the worship team for how many years? Seven. But he thought because he's in church every uh, Thursday, every Saturday and every Sunday, he, he qualifies for, for heaven. He doesn't. And we walked together and by the end of the day, he got saved and we give thanks to God. Ladies and gentlemen, you might be here to hide in church, but I have come to challenge you. It is important for you to know that Christ died for you and embrace him and respond to him by loving him and giving your life, your total life to him. Amen. Number three. If we are going to overcome turbulence in our lives, we must know that God has justified us. God has justified us. Verse 33 says, who will bring any church against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Somebody has defined justification in a very simple way and he has defined it as just as if you never sinned. God has declared us righteous before him because of what Christ has done. If you remember your scripture in the book of Isaiah, it says our righteousness is like filthy rags before God. But God in his own grace and mercy, he has extended his love to us and he has declared that we are not under sin and we have been set free from sin. We have been set free from the bondage of sin. And we need to walk with that understanding that God has given us freedom and liberty. He has freed us from the yoke and the bondage of sin. Because most believers live in subjection of the enemy. Actually the enemy is sitting on you properly. You are saved but he is seated on you. And you, can, you, you look at your life, you look at your family, you look at your things and they are not moving. Why? Because you have started calling this sin the thorn in the flesh. I have seen young people who tell me, Pastor, there, there is this thorn in the flesh. When I just see a lady, I just want to sleep with them. That is not a thorn in the flesh. He only people. Na tutawekelea wewe mkono na tukemee katika jina la Yesu. He talking a yende. That is a spirit of immorality. It is not a thorn in the flesh. Some of us, we, we have even owned diseases and sicknesses. Unaona baridi kikuja ile ugonjwa yangu ya hapa mgongo. Who told you it is yours? How, why do you possess a sickness? Why do you possess a disease? Release it. Be released from that bondage. And declare, even if in your family there are diabetic people, it is not your portion for you to have diabetes. Even if in your family there is a generation and a history of high blood pressure, it is not your portion for you to have it. The Bible says, for when I am in Christ, I am a new creation. The old has gone. Behold, I have become new. 
What does new mean? Kitu kipya, not refabricated. Ah, uh -uh, not mtumba second hand. Mm. You go to Mr. Price and you find a new shirt. You go to Woolworths and you find a new shirt that is new. It has come from the manufacturer as it is. Then why are you owning things that are baggages that the enemy is putting on you? Ladies and gentlemen, we must live knowing who God is in our lives. We must discover that God has already justified us. And the Lord says, whatever he opens, no man can shut. And whatever he shuts, no man can open. If God declares today that I am healed of HIV AIDS, that door is closed. If God declares that even though in my family there is diabetes or there is asthma, that door is closed. I stand upon that justification and proclamation of who God is and I stand upon his word and I can walk with victory and I can soar like an eagle and declare, devil, watch out, watch out. I am coming. I am coming. Why? Because I have been justified. Ah, I am not the young man people used to think I am. Let me tell you a short story. When I went to high school, now I have grown. I am a big man. Some of you are looking at me in shock. I am a very big man. <laughs> you must call things which are not as though they are. Jesus. When I went to Form 1, I was about 4 feet, 4 feet, 4 inches tall. And I was very skinny. And I discovered here, I had heard stories. And I discovered here it is survival for the fittest. I discovered I don't have the strength. I don't have the stature. I don't have the energy. But I have a mouth. <laughs> and I looked and the, the high school I went to was a, a high school of basketballers. So you can imagine a four feet, four inches tall man <laughs> with six feet, six, six, seven, six, eight, some of them seven feet. They will forget I am in their midst at some point. I discovered that I have and, and I told people, do you know the estate I come from? And I used to have my bag throughout. I told them there is a gun inside here. So if you mess with me, we will meet after, after school outside the field. And that kept me for a whole year. And everybody was terrorized. Do you know a serious terrorist? Then in the, in the first term of Form 2, they saw me preaching. At that time, I was still born again. But you know, God has given us wisdom. <laughs> and we must be strategic. When you go to a place, don't just walk like somebody who does not know what they are doing. You know God has given us wisdom. So when I looked at how things will work out here, I knew I will be terrorized. So I in turn became a terrorist before the terrorist terrorized me. And in the first term of Form 2, I stood and I preached to the whole assembly. And there was pin drop silence. And people were thinking, is this Paul or is this Saul? Is this Paul or is this Saul? What is he out about to do? But because I knew, at that time I had already gotten my security. And I knew nobody could bogger me. Nobody could touch me. I was very secure. But because at that point I realized it is, it is better for me to draw people into the kingdom other than to scare them away from it. And I discovered that God has justified me. And I walked with that confidence of knowing that I'm a child of God despite and in spite of my stature. You know some of us live defeated lives just because you have a big nose. 
that does not disqualify you from heaven. Instead, you need to give God the glory and say thank you because I can smell where a party is happening and I can find myself there. Some of us, God has blessed us with big years. And we are always complaining as young people and you're looking at the mirror, you are squeezing your ears to get into size. I am here to challenge you. Maybe God is saying, I will give you those big ears so that when I whisper, you can hear as if it is a thunder. Appreciate who you are. Love who you are. I am confident in who I am. I am short. I am brown. And I am handsome. Whether you like it or not, that's me. Young people, appreciate yourself. The ladies will go to the mirror and they will check if the hips are in place. I cannot illustrate it because of my security purposes. But God knew when he was creating you. When he made you light or dark or plump or skinny, he knew. Why are you fighting to be somebody else? Why are you struggling to be something else? God loves you just the way you are. Just the way you are. And he has justified you. He has justified you. Number four, Christ intercedes for us. I have confidence that I'm able to overcome every turbulence in my life because Christ is interceding for me. Verse 34 says, who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. The earlier verse of the same chapter, it talks about the Holy Spirit interceding for us. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a dual intercession. The Holy Spirit is interceding and Jesus Christ is interceding on your behalf. So why are you so worried about the pressures and the, and, and the, and the frustrations of life, about the difficulties of life? Why are you worried? And you have two chief intercessors standing and representing you before God. Intercession simply means that Jesus is representing us before God. And when you read the next verse, it says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. It does not literally mean that Jesus is seated there. Because some of us get it wrong. It means that this is a position of power and authority. Christ Jesus has power and authority. And because he has power and authority, he is representing us before God. He is standing in the gap and he is saying, I am bringing this request to you on behalf of my children. We don't need to go to a, 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 a priest for us to confess our sins. There is only one mediator between us and God. And that is Jesus Christ. Some of us sometimes give our pastors a difficult time here. You call pastor and you say, Pastor, apa iko homa imenisumbua. Wacha kusumbua pastor. Pea pastor ile kubwa. Mwambi apa iko mapepo inanizuia kulala. Kamanihoma, the scripture says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 that I am a royal priesthood, I am a chosen generation. Not that pastors are a royal priesthood, but all of us are a royal priesthood. Therefore, the homer comes, lay your hand on your head and declare, I am a royal priesthood and I know Jesus, you are interceding on behalf. I am healed in Jesus' name. Call for reinforcement when you have tried and it has not worked. 
You know, there are times you pray and you find, hey, this is a difficult one. We went for a mission with, with some young people and we started praying for, for a high school. And, and the, the presence of God was so heavy and manifestation of demons started taking place. And, and you know, some young people who had just joined. You know, there are people who ask, by the way, they see a van or a bus and they enter and they don't know where you're going, but they just want to go with you. When that happened, they went like there at the back of the hall and they started interceding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And they will hear a, a, a young girl shout, hey! And they will, thank you, Jesus. We give covering. We give covering. Why? Because they had not realized their position in Jesus Christ. Our position in Jesus Christ is secure. And the Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Bible, the scripture that we have, we have read, it says that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our King. We do not do it in our own strength. We do not do it out of experience. We do it out of the overflow of the power of the Holy Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, if you do not go to neology, Demons will beat you, they will harass you, they will disturb you. But if you go to the university of neology and you allow Christ to do an intersection in your life, you will see a transformation. You will see a change. The church is dry today. Why? Because there is no connection with God. We are just there loving God intellectually. And we are an intellectual church. Even the way they were playing the keyboard, he missed three chords. How can he expect the spirit to move? Watch a mamboyako. If you are connected to the spirit, even if they miss ten chords, my God, there is already a transaction. There is already a transaction. And the glory of God is upon you. And when you go to your place of work, you don't, you don't need to announce. You know, we have spiritually proud people. You know, I have been in the prayer center for the last 40 days. Praying and fasting. Watch akutuambia, watch atuone. Some of them say and they are powerless. We must see the manifestation of the power of God in our church today. We went for a camp and we laid hands on young people and the Holy Spirit came upon them and a young man came and told me, Pastor, I have never seen this in Sitam. I have only seen this with Kanyari. I told him, this is the real stuff. This is the real stuff. Watch our watch kuona counterfeit. Let them see the real thing here on this altar. Power. 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 We are not Pentecostals by name. Hata kama tulibadilisha jina tukajita sitam. That's a politics for another day. But we are not Pentecostal just by name. We are called to be Pentecostal by action. Believers who are, they, they pray for a day and they take their son or their daughter to a witch doctor. To do what? And the, you are driving a Mercedes and you go and park in a, hard, in a, in a mad hut. And you are going to... Who, who, who is helping who? Who is helping who? Does that even make sense? You are driving your VX and you go and park it in a, in a roof, in, in a grass-touched house. My God. May the eyes of our understanding be opened. May the realization of who Christ is in our lives be unveiled to us. I don't fear demons. I don't fear witchcraft. I fear nothing. Let them come. Another day they brought eggs and they put it at my doorstep. And they did their things. And I woke up and I wondered, ah, four eggs just at my gate. And I said, mm, thank you, Lord. You work in mysterious ways. This is your provision. I, on, I, was, I was about to have bread and tea alone, but Lord, you have provided. 
I made an omelet and I am as good as I am. I am standing tall. I am standing strong. Why? Because I am more than a conqueror. I went up country and they scooped soil after my tire, the, the tire marks. They scooped soil so that they can go and do whatever they do. So that as I go back, I can have an accident. I arrived safely. And I sent an SMS to them because I know them. And I told them, I am safe in Nairobi. Nimefika. Who can bogo you? Who can bogo you? Who can bogo you? Panakani kama umenyeshewa. Nobody can bogo us. Finally, number five, Christ loves us. Christ loves us. Verse 35 to 39 talks about the love of Christ and that there is nothing that can separate us from him, whether it is difficulty, whether it is trouble, whether it is hardship, whether it is persecution. I have met believers who tell me uh, uh, this salvation thing is not working for me. I have not paid my rent, so let me do, uh, let me bribe somebody, let me do something. You don't have to do that. Your love for Christ should be constant and consistent. Whether you are feeling it or not. Nowadays we have a feeling church. Today I'm feeling saved. Tomorrow I'm not. Today I'm feeling anointed. Tomorrow I'm not. It is not about the feelings. It is about the position that God has given you. He already says, I love you. Most of the times we, when we are giving our testimonies, we, we, we give wrong theology. We say, when I found Jesus Christ, let me correct your theology. You didn't find him because he wasn't lost. <laughs> Hallelujah, when I found Jesus Christ in 1978, watch her. Where? Was he hiding? Jesus Christ found you. Does in the book of 1 John says, while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. He knew us even before the foundations of the world. And because Christ already loved us, we have no option but to reciprocate our love to him. I have this reassurance that because Christ loves me, even when I am dumped, I can still walk with confidence and with my head high. Hello, young people. When you are left at the lights, yani umeachwa matani. You have this confidence that Christ loves me. When when somebody leaves you on the stones, yani umeachwa juu ya mawe. You have this confidence that Christ loves me. You don't have to give yourself to every man that comes and says, I love you. Mm -mm. And because so and so left me and, and Akim Jama comes and is a drunkard. And he comes and he spreads his arms and he says, you know, baby, baby what? Know that Christ loves you. The Bible says in Isaiah 45, for, for you are precious, you are honored, and I love you. That is the, those are the lines I want to hear. Our God is a, is a rhythmic, poetic God. He says, you are precious. Not only precious, you are honored, and that I love you. Even if that man, that lady left you, they saw a man with a bigger pocket. A pocket that needs a VX to go over it so that it can be flattened a bit. It doesn't matter. Christ loves me. And you will overcome the turbulences that come in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, live like a conqueror, not like a victim. We are conquerors through Christ Jesus. Not through our own means, not through our own connections, not even what we do. Christ gives us victory and more victory. We need not to fear life or death. 
things present or things to come because Jesus Christ loves us and gives us the victory. This is not a promise with conditions attached to it that if you do this, God will do that. This security in Christ is an established fact and we claim it for ourselves because we are in Christ and nothing can separate us from his love. Believe it, live it, and rejoice in it. In Jesus' name. Let's stand, let's stand in the presence of God. I want you to take the next 30 seconds and give God thanks. Open up your mouth, lift your hands and give him thanks because he loves you, because he has justified you, because he knows you by name, because he calls you more than a conqueror. Lift your hands, open your mouth and declare, God, I love you. You are my everything. You are all I want. You are all I need. I give you praise. I give you glory. I surrender myself totally to you. I give myself to you. I thank you for saving me. While I was still lost in drunkenness, while I was still lost in drug abuse, while I was still lost in immorality, Father, you drew me by your love. You drew me by your mercy. You drew me by your mercy. You drew me by your mercy. Lord, I thank you because victory is mine. I thank you because favor is mine. I thank you because dominion and authority is mine. I thank you because grace and anointing is mine. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Shakata kadabasika. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, shila basikiri biandara basende. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. No turbulence in our lives will overcome us. No power of darkness will defeat us. My God, my God, nothing will shake us. Nothing will remove us from your love. We are assured of your love. We are assured of who you are. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sharabasi kadabaseke. Oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let your glory rain. Let your power rain. 